What's up, everybody? Welcome to the stream. Hopefully, the music isn't too loud this week. So um, if it is, then let us know and, and I can fix it or I can just turn it off. And we're joined today by a special guest called Elfie, who is my crazy ginger cat. And hopefully she won't destroy everything <laughs> that's happening on the stream. So uh, she's just chilling at the moment. So let's see if... Uh, Let's see if it stays that way. How are you all doing today? Um, looks like, uh, yeah, we're going to do some squeal injection, I think, hopefully. <laughs> the, uh, the ongoing debate of SQL versus SQL uh, is, is ongoing. So, uh, so all good. Love to, uh, love to see that. Um, let me just scroll. I did see at the chat. Arubius, you, you got second in the chat today, so you missed out on the first. Um, Aleem from Twitter uh, actually managed to get the first message in, so props to, uh, props to Aleem. Nice one. All right, let me scroll down and see whether we have any questions coming in. And uh, SQL. <laughs> SQL. SQL is so much easier than saying SQL. I don't know, maybe it's just how I speak, but... Um, you know, it's all good, all good, all good. Uh, let me keep scrolling down. <laughs> Can see all the uh, the cat hype. If I was better prepared, maybe I can um, change my uh, zoom slightly. Oh, there you go. You can see Alpha over here. She likes to chew my finger. I don't know why kind of like a strange strange cat thing to do but uh but all good all right so something that i started a couple of weeks ago um and uh we had we had Rana Khalil on last week so so i didn't do it last week but um we have a resource of the week thing so this week uh i think it was Arubius who who pinged this one um and what I'm doing is every week I'm going to try and share like a, a lesser known resource. So it's not going to be like payloads, all the things or like hack tricks or hack the box or something like that. It's going to be something that's great. That's really awesome. It's worth your time, but you know, like maybe isn't so widely known. And uh, this week's resource is the critical thinking bug bounty podcast. And I just finished up listening today to uh, Naham Sex one, uh, this one here. So this was uh, uploaded a couple of weeks ago. I'm kind of far behind. I've got a load of videos to uh, to catch up on. But it's a video podcast. Um, go check them out. And if you enjoy it, then obviously subscribe. And, and uh, they're putting out a video every week, which is which is awesome to see. So so that's really good. And um, if you want to make a suggestion um, for the uh, resource of the week or next week's resource, then you can do it. If you go to Discord and go to like the Tuesday live stream, and if you're not on the Discord, hold on, there's a, I've set this up as well. You can go to discord.gg and slash TCM and, and jump in, and then you can send me all of your precious resources, you know, that, that need to be shared in the world. And, uh, and that would be awesome. So, uh, so yeah, that's this week's, uh, that's this week's resource. All right, I love this. I, <laughs> I used to watch Stargate a lot when I was younger. And um, I think SG1 got me through like my dissertation. Uh, I used to watch it in the background uh, when I was at university. So uh, yeah, I like the, the Stargate logo. It's definitely, yeah, definitely cool. Bit. I think it's like the Anubis, that's why, right? So all good. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Let me see what questions have we got. Oh, this isn't a question, but coffee. <laughs> Definitely, for sure. I'm, I'm wearing like a hoodie, right? Because it's got a hood. But I, I mean, I can't put the hood up at the moment, but it's, um, you know, uh, it's a hoodie, right? No, it's not like a, a hacker hoodie. This is my, my Formula One hoodie, so... Um, and maybe you can guess which team I'm following if I, yeah, if I show the logo. Not sponsored by Alpha Towery. Soon to be some crazy name since they're changing their team name. But, you know, 
if they do feel like sponsoring us. That sweet Red Bull sponsorship, that would be fun. <laughs> hacking's not an extreme sport, unfortunately. Most of the time, unless you're doing physical hacking, then, uh, then maybe. Um, all right, let me keep scrolling down. Do, 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 do. What's this talk about sabotage? What's going on? Hey, what's up, Dan? How you doing? Good to see you're awake. Because I know you work, like, you know, fun hours. Fun hours that probably aren't that fun. Um, now I can't see the screen because the cat's in the way. All good. Uh, oh, I'm taller. So I'm uh, 183 centimeters, which is six feet. So I'm pretty much dead on six feet tall. But I think you can see, like, there's a picture of me and Heath. Um, so I'm, I'm slightly taller than Heath. And I think, uh, I don't know how tall anybody else is. Because I haven't, like, I've only met Heath and Amber <laughs> in real life. But I'm, I'm above average, but not freakishly tall. Like, I'm not like, a, you know, an NBA player or something like that. I, you know, I don't have, um, you know, super tall... Uh, jeans but just slightly taller than average i think i'm probably average in germany so um yeah yeah so tcm uh so for our courses um if you go through an entire course you get a certificate of completion and then there are also exams um but the exams are separate so you'd get like an exam um uh certification if you pass one of those but yeah all of the courses have completion certificates uh that go with them so so yeah basically if you go onto LinkedIn, you see a lot of people posting up their certificates when they're when they're uh, clearing the courses, which is always awesome to see. I always love people seeing like that you know they've achieved something and put the work in because you know like sticking with something and, and actually seeing it through is is all all good. It's the best thing to do. <laughs> I didn't realize there were non-hacker hoodies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe this is, uh, if I turn it inside out, it's actually a hacker hoodie. So it's like, um, uh, it's like a stealthy, stealthy hacker, hacker hoodie. All right, so let me keep going down. Good to see so many of you in the chat. Oh, this is a, this is a good question. So how do you perform uh, enumeration to escalate privileges when there is a SOC team present? So... Right. Usually when you see us doing like hack the box and try hack me and things like that, you know, we just run things like um, uh, linenum, linpees, um, winpees uh, and things like this. And in a lot of times, like a lot of the time on a real pen test, you may not even need to escalate privileges. What you'll actually be doing is just looking for uh, like attacking active directory services and things like this rather than um, rather than trying to get system on a, a specific machine. Although, you know, sometimes getting system is very useful because you can do things like dumping credentials out of memory and stuff like that. Or you can listen in for incoming connections and do relay attacks and stuff. So uh, one of my favorite things is <laughs> waiting for a authenticated Nessa scan and then just stealing uh, the credentials for that. Um, but what I would do is I would start running like manual commands. So I actually, uh, uh, in my notes, I have a bunch of things like um, standard PowerShell commands that are not um, not like suspicious at all. They just return things like, hey, you know, um, what version of Defender is installed or um, what EDR solutions might be installed and basically just do like manual enumeration to understand what's on the machine. Uh, and if you can understand what's there, um, what software is present uh, in terms of the defenses, um, if you can understand what logging looks like, um, and if you can, if you have access to multiple machines, you can even do a little bit of testing and kind of slowly increase uh, the risks of what you're doing. But to be honest, when I've been pen testing in large organizations, even with a SOC, scans don't even get picked up because, you know, unless it's like a critical alert that they're, they're just like, eh, there's so many like alerts coming in. Alert fatigue is a, is a big problem. And, you know, like it depends where you are in the network, what you're trying to do and things like that. So I suppose the main thing is, is instead of just running standard scripts, um, obviously, if you're going to run something like if you run PowerView, that's going to 
be a red flag, right? But if you obfuscate something or if you just run a single command, the chances of you get you getting caught are minimal. So that's what I would say is don't rely on large automated tasks. Um, cut it back down to what you need and then you'll probably be more successful. Um, yes, <laughs> yeah, we need a TCM cat hoodie. This, uh, this would be good for sure. Um, how to become a cybersecurity specialist in one year. Um, and to be honest, like if you want to get a junior role in cybersecurity, I think a year is a good amount of time. So, uh, but study a lot, get some certifications, start some side projects. Um, the time frame, like what you need to do to enter the security industry doesn't change based on time frame. If you want to do it shorter, you're going to have to put in more hours. Or if you, you know, if you have like a really heavy technical background, like let's say you're an architect or um, uh, or like a head of infrastructure or like a senior developer, the time to enter is going to be much shorter because you're going to have like a lot of um, working knowledge already. Um, so, yeah, it really depends. But you just got to put the work in, get certifications, get the side projects in, uh, brush up your interview skills, network with people. Um, and then look for opportunities. Um, all right, let me keep going down. Stargate Universe is an unrecognized classic of science fiction. Stargate, was that the one where they get stuck on the ship? Because in my humble opinion, that was the worst series. <laughs> Atlantis, in my opinion, was the best, for sure. So, um, yeah, I was a big fan of Atlantis. But Stargate Universe... It was okay. I'm glad I watched it, but I don't think um, I don't think I'll be watching it again. <laughs> Maybe I need to rewatch it. This is this is it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a giraffe. I'm not not really. I used to have a friend whose nickname was Giraffe, and he was legit like seven foot tall. So what what is this weird measurement? Who who uses inches? Like like. Uh, you know, I hear people saying like, what, three quarters of an inch or something crazy? Like, which insane person came up with that? I'm sorry, but inches are, are not cool. Centimeters, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> All right, let me Google though. What's um, 72 inches in centimeters? 180. Oh, Evan, we're like the same heights. So props for that. Now I can tell people I'm 72 inches tall. Awesome. Whoa, this is tall. You are tall, my friend. Very, very tall. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, I did meet Tibbs. <laughs> yeah, we went for coffee. Um, so I think, like, like I'm just a little bit taller than, than Tibbs. We're, we're very similar height, I think, if I recall. I don't really remember. I slouch quite a lot, so that, that also makes me seem a little bit a little bit shorter. All right, let me keep coming down. I mean, five foot two and a half. I think my sister-in-law is about the same, but there's nothing wrong with, with, with being, you know, with being five foot two, it's all good. Nothing wrong with being seven foot either. It's all just, you know, it's all fun and games, I suppose. Um. <laughs> oh dear, this is, uh, yeah. No, we had a good time in London. I wish we had more time to hang out, actually, because, um, I don't know, we, we had some fun chats, and, yeah, it's just cool to meet people in real life and hang out, especially when we're, like, you know, we have, like, really similar um, interests and things like that. So we had a really, um, uh, I can't remember what the place was called, but Tibbs chose a really cool, like, uh, brunch place and we had some good food so that was nice um, let me keep scrolling down <laughs> Pixar it didn't happen oh AppSec hoodies incoming yeah I should do this I could design some cool cool hoodies my tea's a bit cold at some point I might have to take a quick like um, break to get more tea, but all good. All right, so I'm 
four minutes behind on the chat, by the way. So I'm I'm still like scrolling down through. Oh, I can see like there's 27 pin messages. You guys are on fire today. So uh, I think it's all the cat and and height talk. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, so yeah, shout out to like everybody who turned up on Sunday on uh, the TCM Discord. We managed to pop Skyfall, uh, so we're doing the seasonal boxes, um, and uh, yeah, it was a really good group effort. Um, I was totally stuck, um, and uh, Rubius gave me a great hint, uh, which helped me get user, and then and then we were kind of working together, and um, everybody turned up got rooted the box, which is great for an insane box for so for sure. And I think this Sunday we've got an easy box incoming, so I'm looking forward to having a nice a nice easy box. So if you're interested, have a chat to Rubius uh, oh, about the um, Hack the Box seasonal boxes. We've got a nice little team going now. I think there's like 10 people or something, which is quite nice. Uh, actually, I can't, I can't say 100%, but yes, it is my intention. Uh, to be at DEF CON this year, so um, so fingers crossed I'll be there. I'm gonna try. I'm trying to make it happen. I did notice. Right, so we're on. Uh, I don't, don't really want to like spoil Heath's random uh, internal chat, but he was like, maybe I'm not doing DEF CON this year. I wonder if he's doing that because he knows that I'm going. <laughs> so he's like, no, screw it. Alex is going. I don't want to go. <laughs> this is uh but yeah it'll be my first time at defcon so uh so that would be cool oh no i make i'm gonna get banned see the yeah there's there's some political topics that we're not allowed to touch on in fact there's a lot of political topics that we're not allowed to touch on uh, i forgot that um freedom units <laughs> as you say is one of them but uh but all good Um, all right, let me scroll down a little bit faster and then we'll answer some security questions as well. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, so actually, there is, uh, I think, a new course being worked on at the moment, which is all like you know, like pivoting and persistence and stuff like this. So it's in the works. I'm not sure what the time scale is on it or, or when, when it will be, but um, uh, definitely at some point. Yeah, one hundred percent. This will be. This will exist. Yeah, if we, if I'm at DefCon, coffee all morning, beers all afternoon, maybe a cheeky whiskey at night. It's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be fun. Um, oh, Dan's also a very tall man. Nice, 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 nice. One eighty six. So you're you're probably like if I'm here, you're probably like you know. Bit taller than me. Um, this looks like a good question. Okay, so as a cybersecurity or penetration tester, is it important uh, learning Windows administration? Yeah, this is a really good question. The next thing to be talked about the most, but Windows admin skills are so underrated. What do you think? Um, so for right, most of the web servers in the world and external facing systems and stable systems are Linux servers. So that's why like me as like a web person, I prioritize my Linux skills. But if you want to be a penetration tester and you're testing Active Directory or you're doing internal pen tests, then yeah, you can't overlook those Windows administration skills. It's just that my background personally is a little bit more towards like Linux and development and, and things like that rather than more like network penetration testing and Active Directory and Windows boxes. But um, I think, as you say, uh, Windows like administration skills um, are so useful, and yeah, a, a little bit underrated, I think, as well. Understanding how um, uh, Windows services work and how Active Directory works is going to be like a cornerstone for for network penetration testers. So, one hundred percent, I think you're yeah, you're spot on with that. Um, we should do more to learn Windows. Um, and I think it's just so easy to spin up things on Linux that as security engineers, we're a little bit lazy, especially as content creators. I, I can deploy something on Linux and write something in PHP in like five minutes. 
Or I could spend all day configuring and deploying something on Windows that's running like a Java application and is, you know, part of Active Directory. And it just takes a lot more time. Uh, so I think it's that's maybe the main reason is it's just very quick and easy using like Linux and, and things like that. But um, but yeah, for 100%, I think it's uh, definitely important to have Windows administration skills. Um, let me keep scrolling down. Um, have I done cloud pen testing? Not a lot of cloud pen testing, to be honest. Um, done a little bit, um, but not a ton. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm not the the expert in this domain at all. Um, I can probably talk about like the basics, like looking at um, weak privileges and doing assessments and things like that. But it's not, um, it's definitely not my specialty, far, far from it, um, unfortunately. But, you know, maybe one day if I get the opportunity to expand that skill set, then, uh, then, then that would be awesome. <laughs> Ooh. <Okay. laughs> um... Let me keep scrolling down. All right, I think I'm at the bottom. All right, so let me check the pin messages. We've got a few more minutes of questions, and then we'll we'll make a a, a start on today's box. Um, so as a Fresher and OCP clear fresher. So you, you've got the OSCP exam, uh, but kind of new to the industry, how much money you can get. This depends on so many things. Like uh, it depends on what country you're in. Probably more than anything, it depends on the country. Um, and it depends on the organization you work for. Um, yeah, this is almost impossible to answer. In fact, it's, it's easy to answer. I can say anything from like, you know, very little to a lot <laughs> is... Uh, is, you know, there are so many factors beyond, um, beyond, you know, skill and, and things like that, that just contribute to, to income. Unfortunately, the, the world we live in, um, let me switch over to, uh, these pin messages. All right, so I'm just going through the questions that I might have missed. So apologies if I missed your questions. Oh, here's one. Okay, so I'm learning how to get into bug bounty, but I'm having a case of imposter syndrome, so I'm not completely confident in my abilities. <laughs> That's like me every every morning. <laughs> the The solution to my imposter syndrome is coffee. After I have my coffee, I'm like, ah, it's probably not so bad, and then I continue. Um, but what would I? What would you recommend to push yourself uh, to get into the field? Uh, what would be a great place to start? Um, I think if you need some like self-validation, um, doing a little bit of study, like um, completing Portswigger labs and things like that, um, I think is a good way to kind of like have steady wins, especially when you're new to bug bounty. Um, the the wins might be like, you know, not forthcoming like all the time or, or straight away. So it can be like a little bit disheartening at the start. And that doesn't mean that um, you're not good at, at pen testing or bug bounty. I think a lot of bug bounty is pattern recognition uh, and also um, just being able to spot quirks and things in application and having like a little bit of uh, an antenna uh, and tune into things. And that takes time. Um, that doesn't mean you're bad at what you do. It just means that it takes a little bit of time. So honestly, like, you know, um, Currently, because I'm not really studying for an exam, I only do about an hour of study a day. Usually if I'm studying for an exam, it'd be like two or three hours maybe in the morning. Um, but I just do an hour a day. And in the morning, I usually just pick a topic that I'm not really super confident with or a topic that I haven't seen in a long time. Um, and I'll do some labs or, or I'll do a little bit of reading, update my notes. Uh, and that really helps, I think. Because after doing that, I'm like, oh, I can do this because I understand it. And then, you know, I continue. So... So all good, um, but that would that would be my my recommendation. I think it's um, it's simpler than you think. It's not some hacking isn't like voodoo. I feel like it feels like voodoo, but it's not. If that makes sense. Can I share my notes? With this? I'm working on public notes at the moment. I do have this um, wiki that I'm actively updating. 
uh, which is, wait, where is it? Here it is. It's here. Um, so you can see that I've started to break down like different topics and things like this. So you can come into like cross site request forgery. You can understand what it is. You can find write ups. And then I've done some like checklists and exploitation. So um, this is my like public wiki. I mean, there's still a lot of work to do to put into it. My personal notes, unfortunately, are not clean enough to, to put out on the internet. There's too many like spoilers and um, client information and screenshots and stuff like that. But over time, hopefully the wiki will get, uh, will get better. So all good. Um, oh, this is, <laughs> I always ask this to my guests when, when I have them on stream, what advice would I give myself? Um, honestly, if I was to start over, um, I'd do more programming and I did quite a lot. So <laughs> that's especially well in AppSec, like I would probably do a little bit more things like PowerShell, um, a little bit more, maybe C sharp. Um, and languages that I just don't really get along with. Um, that's what I would tell myself to do. And maybe a little bit more uh, system administration. But like, because I'm more on the AppSec side rather than the network pen testing side, um, having the, the Windows skills isn't such a, such a big gap, if that makes sense. I'd do more programming, I think. Um, do, 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 do. This, I think, is the, sounds like, um, I can't remember the chap's name. This was made by somebody else. I can't remember. And I think they left the platform. But um, you can check out, like, Practical Bug Bounty. And we have a new course coming out soon as well. Um, Michael Taggart, is that his name? I can't remember. But, um, but yeah, it's, we're, we're replacing all of our web content slowly. So, uh, so yeah. Um, all right, let me take one more question and then we'll jump into today's box. Um, oh, what's my best C2 framework? Um, I like Cobalt Strike, um, pretty much. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very, it's a good, it's a good framework and I like it. So. <laughs> that was, uh, there is like, um. I can't remember the open source one that's very similar that I used. I used it for a little while, but it's been like two years since I looked at it. Um, can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, Cobalt Strike, I think is very good. A little pricey if you're paying for it yourself, but you know, organizations should be paying for it really. So, um, all right, I'm going to take this one last question and then we'll, we'll jump into box just cause I like this question. So do I think the multiple hacking sets like OCP and CH are worth it, especially as continuing education? So I don't really agree with the continuing education thing. I think that's just a money scam. Um, and I think it's complete BS, but, um, I see certifications unless you're doing it as like a big step up or like a specialization. Um, they're basically diminishing returns, if that makes sense. So um, like when I was hiring pen testers and, and red teamers, I'd look and to be honest, having somebody who has eight certifications isn't any better, in my opinion, than somebody who has two. Um, now, it does kind of depend a little bit on what certifications they have. Um, but uh, generally speaking, for me, like I put a lot of time into like side projects and other stuff that I'm doing, building CTFs and and I'm building some tools and stuff and doing all sorts of other things um, instead of getting more certifications because I've got I've got some sets. I don't necessarily need more. So, yeah, that's that's basically my my general opinion. But I think if you want to go deeper into a field or if you want to branch out and, you know, if you want to become a little bit more of a generalist, for example, having different certifications or more certifications is is good. Um, but I think like one set every couple of years is probably a good a good thing to do but you know for me since i had like you know got my first couple of sets i've never really needed to have more um it's not really not really been uh, a demand for it if that makes sense all right um let me close this and let's get connected to the vpn and also i need to spin up the box 
Okay. Uh, which one? Oh no. I think it's this one. Maybe. Too many, too many VPN files. What's this connecting to? Doesn't tell me. Uh, uh, is it this one? No, I didn't think so. Let's hack the box. All right, I think it's this one. Let's see. We'll find out in a few seconds when I can actually ping the box. Okay, so the box today is called Dreaming. So let's come into here. If I can check my roots, uh, 10.11. Yeah, we're good. Hey, got the right one. So we're good. We're on the network. All right. So let's just do nmap dash a, um, which is like just basically do all the standard scripts and everything. Output uh, normal scan dot initial. Um, I never really got why people do output all. Why do you need like five different files for your scan results? Yeah. I mean, if you need them in XML to pass them into like a tool or something, just output the one that you need and then you're all good. Very strange. Less clutter is good. Even though, like, as you can see, my VM is super cluttered. <laughs> so, it's less cluttered than it would be, uh, for sure. Um, do, 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 do. Is PJWT wet there? I think so. I like to think so. We're working on the next, uh, you know, the next step up, which will be cool. Can't wait. I'm working with uh, with Tiberius on that, so uh, yeah, lots of fun stuff coming. All right, so we've got 22 open and 80, so let's just check out 80. Uh, in fact, let's before we do that, let's sudo vim etc hosts and this, and let's do dreamer.thm. And then we can come here, http colon slash slash dreamer.thm. Ah, default page. Okay. All right. So whenever I see this default page, um, if you saw this on Bug Bounty, um, this is actually an interesting finding, not because you're going to report it, because they'll just be like, we don't care about default pages. Um, but it means that somebody's not gone to the effort of configuring the web server properly. So it probably like, as soon as you see this, it's like, ah, Somebody's been lazy. There's probably an issue somewhere here. So it like warrants further investigation. Um, so just something to like a interesting quirk. Usually when I see stuff, you know, I think, ah, oh, this isn't reportable. Or if I see like a verbose error message, it's like, ah, oh, they don't care about verbose error messages. Well, that's out of scope. Um, but it means that somebody's being lazy or somebody's not doing what they should be doing. So, you know, keep at it um, in that area. All right, so let's do ffuf-u fuzz user share word lists derb, and then let's just do big and see what pages we can find. Oh, HTML comments. What, even on the, on the default page? I mean, I do usually in CTFs, I'll, I'll have a look um at the 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 comments but because sometimes you'll see down here i'll be like ah oh, you know remember to implement slash whatever whatever you know at the bottom but yeah that's a good tip i think definitely for ctfs um checking the comments is is worthwhile uh in the uh in the page source all right so Slash app looks like it's promising. We get a 301. So it's probably a 301 because it's yeah, it's redirecting us to app slash. Like with the with the trailing slash here. And then we have this pluck. 
pluck four, seven, one, three. Let me zoom in a little bit. Hopefully that's uh, easier to see. All right, and here we are. What power would hell have if those here imprisoned were not able to dream of heaven? Cool quote. Um, so powered by pluck. So this is interesting. I wonder what version this is. But it looks like if we need to, we can come in and have a look at the source code. I actually really like looking at source code sometimes because if you have like an issue um, and you're being blocked by something, um, you can come in and you can have a look at like the actual security filter and see see what it's doing, for example. So having a bit of source code is usually nice if you can find the right version of the source code. Um, doesn't look like there's much else here apart from this this admin button. So, oh, there's like file equals dreaming. That's kind of suspicious. So let's try etc past wd. Uh, not found. Let's try slash dot dot slash. Oh. Hacking attempts has been detected for security reasons. We're blocking any code execution. Okay, so maybe we can go in and, and take a look at what's actually being um, being checked here. Assuming this isn't like some kind of middleware or WAF, if it's or whether it's built into the application, we're not sure. But um, let's try. Uh, let's okay. Let's load up Web Suite. Enough, enough manual messing around in the browser. Bub sweet time. All right, uh, dreamer.thm slash app. Oh no. Ah, I keep getting this issue where um, Bursley's forwarding me. I tried to switch off the auto forward, but it's not like, I, I think there's a bug with this version of Burp Suite. I couldn't get it to work. And I saw on the, um, uh, on the forums, a bunch of people had been complaining about this. I think I just need to update though, because it's, it's probably a slightly older version. Um, all right, let's just turn on the manual proxy. And then no foxy proxy. Why don't I have foxy proxy installed? Very strange. Um, let's just do this again. And then we can come here. And then here we are. We're intercepting traffic. We're all good. Nothing to worry about. All right, so let's just have a little play with this. I'm not sure if we want to spend too much time here. But... Um, Let's just encode this. Yeah, we still get hacking attempts. Uh, let's turn this to intruder very quickly. And then payloads. Is there a file inclusion? Ah, directory traversal. Fuzzing path traversal. Uh, URL encode characters because we're in the URL, so just see if we get anything fun that's not just like 404 not found just give it a second to run all right uh so here yeah we get all of this hacking attempts which is like the length uh 428 and then if we come down oh we got 49 I think it's just like the timestamp or something is a little bit different or the content length is slightly different. And then this one, 404 not found. Yeah, it looks like we didn't find anything too interesting here. Okay, worth checking now. Um, all right, so let's leave that. We might come back and investigate that further later on, but giving it a quick fuzz is um, is always worthwhile. We might want to fuzz for like parameters and stuff as well if we get completely stuck. Let's have a look at this. 
Aha, we have a version. Okay, so pluck 4.7.13. Um, let's keep some notes, actually. Uh, where do I want to keep my notes? Let's do it over here. Mouse pad. All right. Um... We can probably fuzz this as well. So let's just grab this, send this to intruder. Because this is funny, like, why is there no um, username here? And this looks quite susceptible to, um, uh, to brute force. So let's give it a try. And let's do passwords. Only 3,000 in here. Let's give that a go. And then while that's running, oh, what's up, Zach? How's it going? Good to see you. Nice to see you in the live chat. I did see your, um, I was lurking on, on your webinar the other day. So uh, yeah, it's nice to see you there. Hope you're doing well. All right, so. Let's see what's going on here. Looks like everything is 200. Password incorrect. Password incorrect. Who? Password incorrect. Let's keep going down a little bit. 1701. Oh no. Oh no, we're locked out. Damn, we're defeated. Ah, oh, that's the worst. Okay. Uh, yeah. It looks like we're going to have to wait five minutes. We could terminate the box and rebuild it back up, but I feel like we should pray, um, pray the price, pay the price of uh, being so reckless. So let's... Oh, oops. All right, there's a five-minute timer. This is, this is how long we have until we're allowed to to start looking at this login form again. So I suspect either this is not the way in um, or it's a very common password. So we might try a bunch of uh, common passwords or it's uh, injection um, or it's like we just need to find a different way in. So th these are my predictions. Uh, so let's go here and let's have a look at search exploit for um, so pluck. And we see a ton which is good to see. Um, so what version are we exactly? 4.7.13. So let's do 4.7. So we've got authenticated RCE. So if we do manage to get in, this is probably our, our way to get a shell. We could file upload with remote code execution. Uh, directory traversal. I wonder if this is what we were looking at earlier. Let's have a look at this since we have a little bit of time. Examine. Ah, uh, data modules. Okay. Uh, this is a Windows box though. So let's try the same payload, but with a Linux. Uh, so let me come back to, how do I come back to home on pluck? So we go data modules. I wonder if it's going to be like hacking attempts. Yeah. This could be the way though, maybe like bypassing this directory traversal. Um, local file inclusion, file disclosure. Yeah, maybe maybe if we have file disclosure, maybe the credentials are like hard coded somewhere so we can find them. Let's see. Uh, so file inclusion. Uh, this is saying where it is in the code. It fails to properly sanitize user input and attacker can exploit Local file using directory traversal strings, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I wonder if what the box has done is it's added this like um, 
like simple WAF to kind of like block some of these vulnerabilities like this. So maybe that's the the trick. CSRF, we don't really care about that. Multiple vulnerabilities, but in an older version. RCE in a later version. Let's take a look at that. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's authenticated. It has to log in first and then Okay, it's uploading after that. Um, so there's only one last one to look at, really. This is the authenticated one. And then how long have we got left on the timer? One minute, 17, okay. So file upload restriction, bypass vulnerability, allows admin privileged user to gain access through the manage files functionality. Okay, so if we can log in, looks like we can just upload files using manage file. Looks like it just logs in, uploads a web shell. Oh, it's using the pony web shell. Okay, I've seen this once or twice before. Just like um, an interactive web shell, which is quite cool. Like um, a bit like PHP Bash. That's also quite a fun web, little web shell. Not very stealthy, but quite cool for CTFs. Okay. All right, well, let's give it another 30 seconds and then we'll try some basic passwords. Otherwise, we'll fuzz a little bit more. We'll do some more directory traversal. And we'll look at how we can potentially bypass this blocking. Um, those are kind of like the threads of thoughts that are happening uh, at the moment. So, so all good. Yes, this is <laughs> overthink everything. Story of my life. Um, yeah, this is what I'm thinking. The only, the only reason this might not be the way is I think this box is rated easy. So just from like a meta perspective, um, if we can enumerate what uh, WAF it is, so if we can use like WAF WAF or something, then there might be a really simple bypass, um, but we'll see. Let's see if we can log in here. So I'm going to try admin, let's try password, <laughs> okay, password works, right, that was the way, god, that, that would have been a massive rabbit hole if we tried to get those directory traversals working. Okay, it's always simpler than you think. All good. Um, so I think, yeah, this manage files, this is where it was like, hey, you can exploit it. But let's give the actual exploit a try. I suspect we can probably upload a shell here. Uh, and we know it's using PHP because we can see this admin.php. Um, a good trick, by the way, if you're like, if you're not sure whether a, a um, application is using PHP or not. So here, right, there's no PHP files, like there's no extension. If you go to something like index.php and it still returns the same file, you're probably, well, you are using like a PHP web server. So you can use that to verify very quickly, or you can use like Wappalyzer, for example. Wappalyzer tells us we're using PHP. Um, there are loads of ways to figure it out, but here we probably want to upload PHP files. So let's copy, um, no, let's not copy. Let's mirror this. So search exploit dash M. Let's give this exploit a try. Because um, we could do it manually, but that looks a bit boring. I want to try and make sure, um, try and get this exploit working to see. It's always fun troubleshooting exploits. It's not always fun, but you know what I mean. It's kind of like a bit more of a challenge. Okay, so it looks like it needs these arguments. So target IP, target port, password, and pluck CMS path. Right, I'm gonna have to remember those things because 
I can't I can't remember four things. <laughs> Why not? Um, and you can see it's using prints with the brackets, so it's Python 3. So let's do Python 3, um, 499.py, and then I've forgotten already, so target IP. So it doesn't want the host name. Let's give it the IP as it's asked for it. And then the target ports, 80. And then password is password. And then the path. Okay, so I think it's going to be slash this, this. And we don't know whether it needs a trailing slash or a starting slash. So we probably need to figure this out. Ooh, looks like it worked. Maybe. That was suspiciously quick. So I'm, I'm doubtful. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, it did work. Unless this is like a troll shell, because sometimes you upload like a troll shell and it like has built in like commands um, and it's like, oh, you didn't actually get a shell. But yeah, it looks like hostname dreaming. So it looks like we're in, which is quite nice to see. Nice and uh, nice and straightforward. And then we can uh, we can upgrade this to uh, a proper shell. But yeah, that wasn't too bad. That was like pretty pretty straightforward, like pretty standard, like easy easy box methodology. So all good. Um, okay. Ooh, LXD is here. I wonder if we can use this for the Privesk. We can see. I can see multiple users: Death and Morpheus and Lucian. So we might have to do some like pivoting through different users. Um, let's, what do we want to do next? Let's do a little bit of poking around um, and just see if we can find anything that's like um, really obvious. <laughs> Otherwise we'll uh, run uh, linpies and what is this? Kingdom backup. Oops. I did my control shift C, which is usually copy from, from shell. Wait. Can I not go in there? Um, maybe. Why can't I go in there? It looks like it's world readable. Very strange. Okay. Um, let's see what's in home. Uh, this is a little bit suspicious, but we can't read it at the moment, but we might need this later on. So we should remember that this is here. Um, let's just cat everything. Oh no, we, we get permission desired. What if we do cat dot star? Just having a quick look through the files in here. No, nothing to you. Okay, let's check the next user. Um, looks like Lucian probably has pseudo privileges. But this file is empty, so there's nothing in there. Oops. Just having a quick look through these files. Unfortunately, we can't read these flags yet. Looks like we need um, multiple flags, though. Oh, we can read this. From shuttle, import copy to as backup, source file is this, destination file is this, and then use the backup function, source and destination, and the kingdom backup has been done. Okay, this might be interesting later on. I'm just going to move one cat away from the other before, before they decide to start going crazy. Um, 
And let's just have a look at these contents of these folders, files. Okay, nothing too exciting there. Um, we can check opt, always worth looking in. Looks like we can read both of these. So I can't get... Ah, look, these credentials are redacted. So these are, this logs into the DB um, and does some stuff. Not sure exactly what, but like, we'll read it later if we need to. But yeah, the DB creds are redacted here. Uh, and cat test.py. That looks like a password. Haha. -ha. So, um, oh, kitten, come on. Come on. Standing in front of my shell. Um, to do add to myself as user. So this is probably Lucian's password. So let's try uh, let's try SSH at uh, dreamer.thm. Ooh, nice banner of the day or message of the day, whatever it is. Hey, okay, we've got a user shell. Nice. Pretty um Pretty easy. Uh, she she comes back every time. Like like she'll just like be chilling here. <laughs> Even if I put her on the floor, she'll jump back up. Um, okay. Let's grab the flag. And kittens, if she's sat on my mouse. It's really irritating. <laughs> let's grab this, and then let's submit this. All right, flag one done. Nice. That's what we like to see. All right, let me check in. I've been ignoring the chat 100%. Um, where are you guys? Let the cat take over. It'll just be like random stuff on the, uh, on the keyboard. Look at this. Uh, Elfie, but Elfie has an E. Not that it matters. But uh, Elfie over... Elfie's like a boy's name, isn't it? Alf? Alfred? Uh, I don't know. But yeah, it's all good. The cat doesn't care what I call her. As long as I feed her, she doesn't mind. Um, yeah, so all of the lives are, in, uh, are on YouTube. If you go to the, the live tab on the TCM YouTube, all of the recordings are there. So you can come back anytime and, and take a look. All good. All right. Um, I'm just going to move it because they started to... Um, you come in here. Go now. They've just started to wake up. I might have to kick them out soon because as soon as they wake up, they go mental. Um, all right. So now we're Lucian. What do we do next? So let's go to temp. Let's pull up Linpeas, I think, and get a little bit of an idea of what's going on on the box. So if we just cd into scripts, and then let me grab my IP address. 10.11.45.32, python 3-m, http.server 80. Ah, uh, let's do 81. Bloody Docker containers. Um, so you get 81 limpies.sh chmod plus x all right let's run that while that's running uh sudo docker ps uh, just kill this docker container There we go. All right. Now I can serve stuff on port 80, which is a little bit more useful. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, we're talking about biscuits. I had some amazing biscuits. The, um, oh, I can't remember what they're called. Fox's biscuits are the best. They're like the, the ginger snap ones with cream in the middle. They're so good. All right, uh, let's have a look. 
Oh, we didn't run pseudo dash L. I forgot about that. We should do that next. Didn't we do a box of the week that had this as the um is the same edit too? This was the Prevesque. Pwn kit didn't work, and I think we used this uh, kernel exploit. Like two weeks ago. You see two stuff. Uh, this is us. Apache. Uh, nothing too exciting here. Yeah, this is, I think this is due to like the pseudo stuff. So we need, we definitely need to check our pseudo privileges. We have the password as well. So, so I'm just gonna have a quick run down this and see, uh, see if anything else sticks out. Otherwise, uh, 53, 3306. So yeah, MySQL. Um, since that was redacted in that scripts we found, I think we're gonna be on the hunt for MySQL. Oh, we also need to check the groups as well because I saw LXC. Uh, oh, sorry, LXD. Um, so if we're in the LXD group, we can use that to Prevesk as well. Potentially. There might be some configuration file with a clear text password in var dub 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 somewhere as well. We didn't check that yet. All right. And then the rest of it is usually not that useful until it is useful. And then you realize you skipped over everything. All right. Um, considering there's multiple users, we want to try and become another user, I think. So let's try this. Whoops. Ah, OK. Right. Yeah, we've got pseudo privileges. We can run home death get dreams .py as death. Ah, uh, OK, but we don't know what's in this file, right? Let's see. We can't read it. Oops. Oh, no, that's the flag. No, that's my Docker container. <laughs> uh, permission denied. So we can run it. But I think, yeah, it's this. It looks like it's the same script here, but with the redacted password. So we can run that as death. So we probably need to understand what this is doing. Um, OK, so connect to MySQL. I'm glad it has comments. That makes life uh, much easier. So select dream and dream from dreams. Execute the query. Um, grab the data. If nothing's found, print this. Otherwise, loop through the results and echo the information using subpro. Okay, this is sus af. <laughs> to be to be a little rude. Um, yeah, look at this. So we have command equals um, this f string, and then it's going to echo these, and then we've got this sub process. Um, so this is going to execute, or we can like put commands in here to execute, because we're using the sub process here. So I think what we can do is like, for example, it's going to like um, our data is going to be something like hello, right? And then it's going to do. this subprocess check output of command. And then the command is like, it's going to echo this. So if we just have hello, it's going to be like echo hello, right? But if we do something clever, like for example, if our data is backtick, backtick, who am I? Or if our data is something like uh, a command like this, we should be able to get code execution. Um, so this is like a dangerous function for sure. And I think that looks like this is um, the way to go. The only thing is, is how do we get data into the database to execute? That's the question. We need to find the credentials. So this is my theory. We need to find creds, put our 
code into the DB, run that script as death, and then we become death, uh, the user death. Uh, CD HTML. And the cat's climbing the curtain. That's normal. I can't have nice things these days. Uh, let's. I'm just having a look for a config file or something. Maybe it's in that. I don't even know if this uses the database. Oof, there's a lot of passes. Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Very existential, yes. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like boilerplate stuff to me. Just having a quick look to see. That admin password must have been hard coded then if it's not using the DB. I can't see any like DB config or anything like that. Okay. Um, hmm. Uh, whoops. What was in here again? Test.py. I wonder if it's this. Um, MySQL dash u mission dash p. No, access denied. Maybe let's try the same for the root user. No, access denied. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> oh dear. I know, I know the stream's not going well when the chat has to entertain itself with, uh, with, with cheese checks. Not that I disapprove. Oh dear. Okay. Um, it's all good. All good. Nothing in term. Uh, AU, stop bopping. Crazy kitten. What about snap in here? Oh, are we part of the... Oh, we're not part of the LXC group. That's annoying. I don't think there are any credentials to find in here. I'm not sure the structure of this. Um, there's probably a more efficient way to search for passwords. Oh, .ssh. Anything fun in here? That's just the authorized keys. Which we're, well, we were logged in anyway, so. Ooh. We've uh, already got. Um, so we don't have anything in here. What about history? Ah, there we go. Found it. Okay. That was. Uh, Took a little while to find, just looking in the usual places. Um, the user history. If you're on a real life web server, as soon as you get a user shell on, on, the, uh, on the server, just type history. And more often than not, you'll find credentials in there because people typo credentials all the time. Um, uh, when logging into servers, when, when trying to access services like MySQL and things like that, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a pretty common common thing. Um, hold on, I'm gonna kick these cats out because they they just the showdown is happening on my desk. One second. Come on, you two. Come on, kittens. Oh. Kittens. Let's go. Good girls. Oh. There we go. As soon as the bopping starts, it's like no. Okay, gotta bye bye cats. They'll 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 have a run around and then I'll let them back in later. Um, 
I can't remember. Uh, I met. Uh, I don't want to say who, but I met a hacker who spent some time in prison because you know they were doing bad things on the internet, and they said um, they said to me that their most successful like um, privesque or like um, uh, attack was basically getting a low privilege shell. Um, and then typing history, and then more often than not, there's credentials uh, in there. You don't always see it so much in CTFs. Sometimes you see it in CTFs, but um, but yeah, on uh, live systems, super common, super super common. Let's hope this password actually works. <laughs> it does. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So use uh, what's the database called again? Oh, let's just show DBs. Uh, sorry, show databases. I'm in, uh, I'm in Mongo mode. Like my brain is, doesn't handle multiple databases at once. Uh, so it must have been a library. So use library, uh, show tables. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what's in here. Select style dreams. Okay. So there's the dreamer in the dream. And if I recall, it grabs both um, like separately. So if we do something like insert into dreams values uh, Alex and uh, let's try touch temp test like this. Oh no, that didn't work. What's wrong with this? Do we need brackets around here? <laughs> Maybe it doesn't like these back ticks. Let's try this. Oh no, I put the thing in the wrong place. Okay, that, that'll do. Select star from dreams. All right, so that's in there. So let's see if this works. Uh, what's Lucian's password again? Oh no. I should have put it into my notes. Hold on, we're gonna have to cancel, cancel. Uh, where was it? Opt. Oops, not pot. Test up high. This is the password. All right, let's put this in the notes. Here. And then let's do this. Uh, oh, as roots. Sorry, we need to do dash u def like this. Because, okay, so if you see here, we have, this is the user that we're allowed to execute this command as with no password. And this isn't roots by default. Like if you see like zero or something, then it's it's going to be roots. But um, in this case, it's a different user. Okay, so we can see our output here. Yes, that's what we wanted to see. And look, this file is owned by Death, and uh, the group is Death as well. So we can get we have code execution as the user Death, if that makes sense. So that's that's quite nice. Um, all right, uh, how do we privesque from this? What's the easiest way? We could try putting a shell in there, like a reverse shell, but that seems like a lot of troubleshooting and effort. Um, what else could we do? Hmm. trying to decide. We could create a binary, give it the sewered bit. That's also another option. Um, oh, I don't know. There's so many choices. All right, let's just do a shell. That's fine. Um, okay, so in here, so we have bash. Let's go to payloads all the things. Let's see. Um, oh, 
I'm gonna try this one. Okay, let's do this one. Oops. I forgot we still had this, this web shell here. Um, let's modify it here first. And then we need our IP address. Like this. And then let's do back to 4444. And I'm going to do like slash bin slash bash because it's always good to use the full paths. So let's try this. Ah, use a uh, library. Okay, I'm actually going to SSH in as a, again, SSH lesion. Uh, actually, no, let's, let's do a split. Control Shift D. Oh no, I'm in the wrong, wrong terminal. This one, Control Shift D, SSH Lucian at uh, what's the box called? Dreaming dot Is it called Dreaming? What's the box called again? Let me just type the IP. 10, 10, 151, 150. Okay. All right, so down here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our payload up here and then down here, we're gonna test it. Um, so sudo dash L and then we're gonna grab this and then we're sudo dash U death. Oh, and we need to set up a listener. Oh, bad FD number. Okay, so that one didn't work. All right, so let's try another payload. And my music stops. Let me put that back on. There we go. Um, this is why I don't like using bash reverse shells because they don't always work. Um, let's copy this one. We could actually just generate a reverse shell and um, and then like with an MSF Venom and then execute it. Ah, you know what? I've got an idea. I've got an unconventional way to pop a shell. Um, let's go to... Right, so we see we have scripts here. Uh, let's go to just like CTFs. Dreaming, copy, user, share, web shells. I'm going to just pop up reverse, um, reverse shell using PHP. And then let's get rid of all of this. And let's grab our IP address. PHP is so stable. It's such a good way of popping shells. All right, so let's save this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to python3 m http dot server 80. And then on the box um, here, I'm going to go cd slash temp. And then I'm just going to wget this slash php reverse shell dot php. Oops. Uh, what's it called? Let's move it quickly. Uh, move this to rev.php so I don't typo everything. Oh no, why can't I get it? 1010, is that my IP address? No, that's the box I pitched. Ah, oh, no wonder I'm not getting shells. Why is this my? Why are you guys letting me put the wrong IP address in? You guys have one job to do, and that's to stop me putting in the wrong IP address into things. Ah, uh, okay. Rev.php. 
Okay, there we go. No wonder these aren't going to work. Um, all right. And let's just do php, whoops, php-f temp rev.php. Fingers crossed. Uh, did I put the right IP address into the PHP file? That's the real question. Hold on. Ten ten. No, I did not. Uh, okay. Ah. Uh, what's going on with my life, huh? What's going on? Okay. Let's try this again. Um, I'm just going to move this to uh, rev to rev2.php and then let's create in this again and then let's grab this once again. Oh, that's the wrong IP address. There we go. And then uh, we don't actually need to do anything else there. Here we want rev2. And then let's just rm rev.php because that might cause some issues. Just in case, I'm just going to give it executable permissions. And then I think we just need to make sure our shell is set up. Our listener, sorry. Yes, and we caught a shell. Okay. <laughs> that took longer than it should have done. But if you're struggling with like um, bash reverse shells, uploading like a Python script, a PHP reverse shell, um, Perl, stuff like that, generally speaking, I find works a little bit better, um, a little bit more nicely. So, and on the box, you can figure out what technology you want to use by just being like, which PHP, which Perl, which Python, etc., etc., which Python 3, uh, and things like this. So, here, who am I? And then we can upgrade this Python 3 C import pty, pty.spawn, bin bash, whoops, like this. And then we got a shell. Okay, so now we're death. Okay. Step two done. I think there might be a flag. Uh, yeah, here we are. Oh, we don't have a fully stable shell, but that's fine. Let's grab this and submit our second flag. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, this is a good question. So, you know, Heath had, uh, was a, an accountant before he became a pen tester and started CTM. So, you know, uh, yeah, never too late, I think. That's definitely uh, definitely the way to go. And like um, uh, Joe was, uh, he was a mayor and he was in politics before, before moving into penetration testing. Um, I feel like almost everybody, I had the most boring routine, like normal. I feel like more often than not, people have an interesting routine and now nah, it's never too late. It's all good. Um, let me scroll down. JavaScript is a bit niche. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, if you're, if you're talking about general web, uh, penetration testing, for sure. Um, but it's useful for web app stuff. Um, yeah, I think this this is right uh, for sure. Yeah, take a look at um, Python first. That's that's the way to go for sure. Unless you've really got your heart set on web application penetration testing or web app security, then Python's the way to go, hundred percent. Yeah, and as as Britt says here, everyone starts somewhere, right? So yeah, all good. Nobody's born a hacker. Um, 
Well, maybe they are. It's just like, obviously, there's still other skills that you need to develop. So, all right. Um, ah, we're still not in the Alex C group. Okay, my prediction of Alex C might be wrong. Um, what do we want to do now? So we ran get dreams to get here. Um, hmm. Let's rerun. Um, because we're in a different user context, let's rerun uh, re run Linpy's. Um, oh god. There we go. And see whether anything just flags up. I'm not going to read through the whole thing. I'm just going to look for yellow highlights just in case uh, as it comes up. And while we're doing that, I can... I can uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. I need to check this. I need to pseudo dash L for sure. That'll be the next thing I do. This is it. This is... Um... You, you phrased it better than me. Everyone, like, you're born a hacker, but the underlying, you have to, like, bring it out through hard work and learning and, and things like that. Personally, I think it's more about curiosity than anything. That's the real, the real trick. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I think I've used all of mine for now. And that, I'll, I'll find a good one for next week. I think I used most of mine. At least the good ones. I know a bunch of really bad ones, but... All right, I didn't see anything too crazy pop up here. Like I say, I'm not going to read through this whole thing again because I think we got the gist of it. But um, I was just looking for yellow, um, yellow highlights in case we suddenly had access to something that um, that we didn't see before. So let's. Ah, I'm going to wait for it to finish. We could do this, but it's sometimes like if I wanted persistence for sure, or if I was working on this for like more than a couple of hours, um, hundred percent, yeah. And this is this is a good shout. Like this is a good way of like maintaining access, making sure you have uh, long term stable access to a box. But since it's just kind of like an easy CTF, um, I tend to cut corners a little bit. But uh, yeah, generating SSH keys is so handy, hundred percent. We're working on a, um, uh, let me link it. We're working on this capture the flag machine dreaming area. And it's a free box. So if you have an account, you can just sign up to try hack me. It's a free box. So you're welcome to just, you know, come along at the same time. Enjoy the journey. We got, ah, uh, we got two flags. We just need one more flag. Interesting. All right, uh, let me just see if we missed. Nothing exciting there. Okay, so let's try sudo dash L. Ah, oh, we don't have the password for death. Uh, we do have some passwords, though. Let's check the one in the script to see whether it's a reuse. So, for example, here we have the um, get dreams. Oh, DB pass. Uh, oh, here it is. So we can sudo dash l and try and see whether this is... Ah, uh, we don't have pseudo privileges. And that, that makes sense because we don't have a um, uh, like a pseudo success thing in here. So it's worth a try though. Whoops. What is that? History. History. Uh, oh look, solution. Yeah. Hmm. So we got that. Uh, what was this test 
dropped high. I thought, didn't we find another script earlier? Oh yeah, the restore bot up high. Hmm. So we need to become Morpheus. How do we do that? Um, hmm. Let's try process spy, because that's the only real thing we haven't looked at yet, is the running processes, because we enumerated a lot of stuff with um, with uh, limpies and, and manual poking around. So let's come into scripts. And we have, do we have PSPY? Here we have PSPY already, so, oops. So let's pop up a quick web server and it's an x64 machine like everything is these days slash uh, PSPY64. All right, because uh, I'm in like a limited shell, I'm going to use timeouts and I'm just going to time out, let's say 120 and then dot slash PSPY64. So after 120 seconds, it's just going to kill the scripts, but it's just going to monitor processes for the time being. 100% um, take the red pill. The blue, the blue pill's like stay in Wonderland, right? And then the red pill is like down the rabbit hole. Maybe take both. <laughs> See what happens. Bro, like, I don't know, like, programming is just, you know, you just got to put the work in, and then it's not something that comes overnight. I've been programming for, like, on and off for 20 years, and I still don't consider myself, like, a good programmer. I just, you know, learn new things and improve over time, and it's all good. That's the, the real trick, is that um, realizing that it's a lifelong journey, and there's no, like, there's no completion there's no like, oh, today you're a programmer. It's just, you're just going to get better over time. Wow, this is going crazy. What is going on here? This is a lot of stuff to look through. Ugh. This is all us, I think. Yeah, 1001. I think this is the Lucian user. So, oh, well, no, sorry. 1001 is death. 1000 is Lucian. So this is all of our activity. And this is normal Apache stuff. Don't have to worry about that. What else do we have? I see Root doing some stuff, but nothing super crazy. Nothing out the ordinary, I don't think. Not very good at talking while reading this output. Sorry about that. God, there's so much to go through. Um, uh, 
What I actually want is, I don't really care about all this root stuff. Because we want to become Morpheus, right? So maybe we can grep for Morpheus's ID. That might be a way to do it. Might run this again just for another 60 seconds, make sure I didn't miss something, because... Ah, yeah, okay, that looks sus. I'm glad this is highlighted in yellow, because I would have missed that. Okay, so it looks like 1002, which is Morpheus, uh, is running this command. So bin sh, python3, home Morpheus restore.py. So let's take a look at this. I'm just going to add this to my notes. I think I can see the path. So let's, can we cat this? This is the one that we can read, right? So yeah, um, there's only one real way to exploit this, I think. And I think we need write permissions to this utility, uh, to this module. Unless this is uh, this backup utility. Uh, so this function from this module is um, vulnerable to something, which we'll need to look for CVs. And then um, we can put something uh, malicious in home Morpheus Kingdom. But I, oh, maybe we can write to Kingdom Backup Kingdom. I don't see any other way. So let's do, let's try and find this. So find slash dash name. It's going to be called shootil, shutil, however you say it. Um, See if we can find this on the system and see see whether we have privileges. Um, oh, who's this? Who's that? <laughs> I have no idea who that is. Somebody, somebody's uh, hacked the chat. All right. Uh, so here's the module. I suspect. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is owned by Root, but the group is Death. Uh, and uh, death has write privileges. So roots can read writes, death can read writes, and everybody else can read. So um, looks like this is the way. Um, how do I want to do this? Let's go to, since it's a Python script, let's just drop a Python reverse shell in there and see if that works. Otherwise we'll break the whole thing. And then, you know, we can just reset the box, so it's fine. It's all good. Um, Let's go with this second one, because this is like going to be using the environments. We don't want to be using the environments. We want to be using this. Uh, where's my... All right, let's get the right IP address this time. Grab this, and then drop this in here. So what we're actually doing, right? Let me explain, actually, because I realize I haven't really explained it. Um, we're taking this um, reverse shell and we're going to write this to the Python module. So when this is imported and run, um, it's just going to run this code, basically, instead of like the actual module code. So if we netcat and LVP4444, you notice like we're, we're going to be in um, SS, uh, SSH here, which is spawning a shell, which is spawning another shell. So we're... Um, like three three shells deep, uh, if you're if you're counting shell inception. Um, so we want to echo this too. And don't do this on production systems because you're going to bust. Like if this was a production script or like a production system, I'm breaking the script. It's not going to function as normal because instead of running as normal, it's going to pop shells. So just something to be aware of. That's something I learned from Tibbs actually as well. Um, like adding the sewered bit to bin bash to escalate privileges, better to create a copy of bin bash, like called bin bash two or something, 
uh, and add it to that because on production systems you don't know what's going to happen if bin bash has sewage privileges uh, bad things can happen so i think we just do that and then and then wait we'll give it a minute or so um see what happens um yeah, so when you catch a shell um, uh, and catch an incoming connection, it spawns off and uses a different, uh, like a different port. So, um, so you don't have to worry about it. So obviously, if I created like, if I tried to open up a new listener on four 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 four, while the other listener was active, it'd be like, hey, port's in use. But since it's already been used, and then it like creates some sub process. I don't exactly know how it works, but um, but yeah. Oh, this is it. Yeah, yeah, root bash. So um, copy vim bash to temp root bash and then and then add the um, sewed bit and then you can use the dash p privilege flag uh, to to gain uh, privileges. So something I remember from the uh, years ago in the OSCP privess course that, that I did. It looks like oh we got a shell. Yes, we're Morpheus. All right. Nice, love it. That's the last flag. So I think that's the box done, but we're not root, so let's um, pseudo dash up. <laughs> okay, so we are almost root. Um, whenever you see this, you can do like a little dance. Uh, so we can just do something like. Um, There we go. Now we're roots. I was like, hmm, what command do I want to run to run roots? But, uh, but all good. Yeah, passwordless sudo on anything is, uh, is of course, free, free roots. And there we go. All good. And that's the box. Oh, sudo su. That's it. I always forget the different commands. Is that different to what I did? Don't know. But we can do, um, for example, we could copy, like we were saying before, bin bash to like slash temp slash bash two, or I think root bash. Root bash, is that what, yeah, is that what you called it? And then like chmod, uh, so let's say we have sudo chmod plus s slash temp root bash. And then if we ls lah, uh, sorry, bin temp root bash. You can see the sewed bit is set. So we can do slash bin bash dash p. And that didn't work. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, chone. Do we need to change the chone? Yeah, we do. Um, uh, root bash. Hold on. Need to sudo. Do, 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 do. It's turning out to be more effort than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> okay, let's check again. Root bash. Okay, and then we can temp root bash dash p. Ah, oh, it still doesn't work. It still comes back as the user. Anyway, you can do something like that. Doesn't really matter. Can't remember, but there we go. Um. Yeah, why does that come back as the user and not the owner? Even though it has the sued bit set. Very strange. Not sure why. After I'll look into it later. It's all good. Um, but anyway, we managed to solve the box, so that was pretty good. That was a fun box. Um, I actually quite like doing the whole like switching between users, finding stuff, finding credentials. And I feel like, yeah, credentials is like certainly something that's overlooked um, on real boxes. Um, my number one way to get domain admin is just to find a script with hard-coded credentials and then use that and then your domain admin. That's that's pretty much how I usually find it on, on larger organizations. Um, 
Obviously, there's lots of other fun, more interesting ways to get domain admin, but that's probably the most common uh, for sure. So, so all good. All right. Um, let's answer just a couple more questions, and then we'll we'll wrap up for for the evening. So, or, or the day, depending on what time it is. I think it's the afternoon for most people. Um, I need to eat dinner soon because it's later here in the UK. Um, let me see what pinned messages I missed. Oh, here's a good question. Uh, is hack the box slash try hack me always Linux? No, there's lots of lots of Windows servers. Um, I would say the majority are Linux. Like it's probably 70 30 or something like this, or maybe 80 20. But there are there are Windows boxes as well. Not many Mac uh, machines or like minis, probably because of licensing and stuff like that. So, you know, that's a shame. Um, web pen test framework. There's the um, OWASP testing guidelines, so you can use that as a as a good reference. I think that's probably a good uh, good place to start. Um, otherwise, I mean, there's a few different methodologies you can follow. Uh, most people kind of have like their own that follows a general methodology, but like will prioritize different things, or will prefer different attacks, or you know, will prefer different uh, fuzzing lists and things like that. So. So all good. Um, do, 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 do. All right, let me come back to the chats. Oh yeah, the box is called Dreaming, um, which I think I have it here. This is the box name. Yeah, that was quite a fun one. It's good. It's quite quite uh, new. I haven't seen it before. When was it released? Do, 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 do. Oh, 81 days. So it's uh, like almost three months old. So all good. All right. So let's do one more. Uh, one more question. And. What's the last question going to be? Yeah, I can see this. Uh, <laughs> I just dropped this Finn person into into the block chat uh, or whatever uh, into timeout. I'm not sure what it is or how it works, but I think YouTube Slaps the ban hammer. It's all good. Um, malware is bad. <laughs> Learn SQL instead. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the way to go for sure. This. Uh. Ah, okay. This is a good question. So, on the Dreambox, how did you know how to add Dreamer to each host? So, it's generally speaking um, for. Try hack me and hack the box. It's just the box name dot like thm or htb uh, as the standard one. You don't always have to do it, but I'm pretty sure most of the time the um, the hosting is set up like that. So I don't think I've ever encountered it where it hasn't been followed the um, the uh, the naming convention of the box. There might be ones out there where you have to then enumerate other like um, domains. But uh, but yeah, I pretty much just add the box name always uh, as as standard. So so that's the way to go. Um, all right, and I think that's it for for this screen. So um, so yeah, have a good rest of the day, everybody. Have a great afternoon, evening, morning, um, whatever time it is. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow for Tiberius's stream. Um, web app Wednesday, which is 2 p.m. ET. And oh, yeah, don't forget to learn Squeal. Squeal is where it's at, so 100%. All right. Um, oh, yeah, and for the resource of the week, um, don't forget, go to the Discord. Uh, if you're not on Discord, it's discord.gg slash TCM. On the Tuesday live stream, uh, if you have like a, a small creator or a great list or something that's just awesome that isn't very well known, you know, maybe it's like a great tool on GitHub that only has like one star and no forks or something like this, um, let us know in there. And if it's something great, then we'll share it uh, 
uh, next week. All right. Catch you next time, everybody. <laughs>